Just like you've got edema everywhere, your bowels are also going to have edema in them and therefore you will not absorb the pill. So the pill is not going to be effective. That is why it is so important for you when you treat your patient with fluid overload and CHF exacerbation, you get them to a dry weight. And when you are diuresing them pretty well, you also want to keep an eye on the patient's renal function. Because the patient is going to get intravascularly depleted, which is going to result in some form of volume contraction, which can lead to AKI. So always be mindful and watch patient's creatinine. Apart from creatinine, what else would you follow in your patients? Electrolytes, yes, but also bicarb. Now, bicarb is very interesting and important because whenever you're diuresing somebody, you will end up with volume contraction, and as a result, you'll end up with metabolic alkalosis. You will have metabolic alkalosis first. Eventually, when you develop an AKI, you'll end up with metabolic acidosis. So, bicarb is a very important thing. Most people you're diuresing, you'll actually see their labs and you'll see that their bicarb is slowly trending up. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. What else? What about potassium? Electrolytes. Because loop diuretics which we do causes hypo everything, including potassium. So you can develop hypokalemia. What about calcium? It can cause hypocalcemia. So that can go down too. What about sodium? Yeah, that can go down too. So basically all the electrolytes can actually go down. So you really want to monitor your patient's electrolytes every single time you're giving them the drug. So that's something really important for us to be mindful about.